Welcome to the Applicant Pre-Certification Training Session. I will be demonstrating how to make a Pre-Cert TIC, Tenant Income Certification. You might ask, so why would I make a Pre-Cert? Here are some reasons why making a Pre-Cert is to your good advantage. 1. The certification form qualifies them for occupancy. Number 2. Simplifies your move-in process. Now you like simplification, right? You can prepare all of your paperwork in advance of your move-in's arrival. Sit back, have a cup of tea. If your applicant shows up, just have them sign it. And if they are successful in moving in, they brought all their money and you've given them the keys, just do a copy to move in later. And lastly, the applicant tick data can be used in the waiting list. There's maybe some more reasons, but those are some important ones. First, open the tick module, like I've done right here. Take your mouse. Find the group sidebar called Applicants over on the left and click it. That exposes the icons underneath it. Now click the View Applicants button and the grid fills with a list of applicants for your property. Now, I've already made the assumption that you've already entered an applicant. Entering an applicant is another training session. Hopefully you already know how to enter an applicant. If not, view that session. Let's also figure that the criminal background check came back clean and you have all the information provided by the applicant to create a tick. Now I'm going to get focused on this fine applicant down here and I'm going to double click on it and that will bring up the applicant form. We have another training video that goes into detail about the applicant form functionality. Right now we're going to notice the button at the bottom of the form that says new pre-cert. Now this button will not be available in any other modules like the tenant module. When the RD form opens it starts at the application date. What we're going to put in here is uh, the move-in date, the expected move-in date. If you're not sure what the expected move-in date is, just go ahead and make up something reasonably close. I'm going to enter in a date now. I'm going to press enter. And most of the time on uh, these forms in multi-site, especially the data entry forms like this, it's better off if you use a mouse. I mean, uh, better off if you use the keyboard instead of the mouse particularly until you know the flow of this of the system. I'm going to press enter. Now I'm going to go over to the unit ID and I'm going to pick this one, A2. It moves to the tenant subsidy code. See how that field that I'm in where the blinking cursor is is white. Now notice all of the other blue fields on the form. The blue fields are where you could enter information. The white field indicates that's where your cursor is. Now watch, as I put a 1 in here, then I hit tab, I went down to the social security number. Did you see how that turned white? And then I'm going to go from left to right across the page as I enter this information. Male or female. Birth date. Now the race code, as I entered that, the pop-up form filled up. Because there was nothing in there, the form knows to open. You can also press F2 in most places in multi-site where you want it to bring up a list. Now I'm going to tab into the ethnicity field. What I'm doing is, is I'm double-clicking on those. The source, customer declared. Now I hit tab and I go over to elderly, handicapped, or disabled. I'm going to press the F2 key and I'm going to put a none in there. Remember F2 key brings up the pop-up list. I'm going to hit tab. Now if I kept going through all of this, see how it jumps from one to the next? But I'm going to cheat a little bit. Hit page down key. 
Then I'm going to take my mouse and I'm going to put it in the Net Family Assets right here. Now you would think that you could enter information in here, but you cannot. You must press F2 to bring up a worksheet. This is the income summary information just before the worksheet which we are going to next. We've not entered any incomes yet, so this grid is empty. I'm going to press the Add Income button on the lower left right now. Now we are at the actual worksheet. The member number was pre-filled with member number 1. If you had more members, you could now change it to another member. I'm going to hit the tab key, go down to the care code. If I will be claiming child care allowance later and I want to use this income for income that allows me to look for work, then I would enter a C here. Now the next field says description. I'm going to tab into it, but before I do, I want to tell you something about it. When it on this form, when you tab into an empty field like the description, a pop-up window is going to come up and give you some official choices. Just, I'm going to do that right now. You'll be able to choose from one of these forms right here. I'm going to choose a business and I'm going to double click on it. I'm going to press the tab and I'm going to go to the income code and it will give me a list of choices for codes that pertain to business. I'm going to choose W non-federal wage, double click on it, and then I'm going to press enter, go to Social Security Benefits Claim Number. I don't need that for this. If you did need it, Multisite would have pre-filled it. Entity name here, enter the name of employer institution. I'm going to make up a name. There's business. I tab into the next one. It's hourly or periodic. Now you can change this to a P and the fields will change. You've probably seen this before with other programs. I'm going to leave it as hourly and go down to the rate. $10 an hour, enter, uh, 25 hours a week and 50 hours, I mean 50 weeks a year. Uh, this person is very fortunate. It makes $500 in, in, in overtime. So that brings the annual amount to $13,000. I'm going to press the Save button now. When the worksheet closes, you'll be brought back to this income summary information. You can see what we entered in here for this one income summary <coughs> items. That was a multi-site alarm clock. His job is to make some noise and wake us up so we can go on and do our next task, which is to enter asset information. This looks exactly like the income form, does, a summary form, doesn't it? Well, that's what we wanted you to do. When you learn one skill in multi-site, you can transfer it to other skills. There's no assets entered yet, so I'm going to press the Add Asset button. The Asset Worksheet opens up. The member number is defaulted to number one, which you can change, but there's only one member in this demonstration. I'm going to press the Tab key, and I'm going to enter in the name of the institution. Um, we're going to call this... Uh, Bank of Print, Type of Assets, Savings, Cash Value of Asset, Earned Interest Rate. Now I have a choice here. I can enter in a decimal percentage or go down to the next field and enter in the amount. Let me show you how you enter in this earned interest rate in a number less than one. Let's say you're getting one and a quarter percent. I'm going to type 0 0.0125. When I press enter, I go into the actual income for assets and it calculated $18.75. I want to show you that you can override that. Let's say that the actual income was $10. You enter that and press the save button and you're done. Here we are back at the Asset Summary Information screen where we left from. We could add more assets, but I'm not going to for this demonstration. So to close this, I press the Close button down at the lower right. After I've entered in the assets and income, I skip down to the last field in the form because there really isn't anything else for me to fill out. Everything else was pre-filled. 
I'm going to press enter to tab off of that field and the rental assistance form opens. The rental assistance form allows you to change the tenant rent payment by placing money in the different categories on this form. You may spread the money anywhere you wish, but there is one rule you must follow. The amounts have to balance to basic rent. Let me demonstrate how you keep the basic rent in balance by changing the tent rent payment and tabbing off the field so that the form will recalculate. Notice the balance to basic rent field is not equal to zero anymore. There's $500 in there. Well, this tenant receives $500 from a public housing organization. I will put $500 in the RA amount Section 8 NP, NP stands for non-project, and then I'm going to tab off of that field so the form will again recalculate. Now we're balanced to basic rent. You can save and close this RA form. If we're not balanced to basic rent, Multisite will not let you save. We're now back to the CERT form. Notice that the tenant paid rent field is $35 and the rental assistance now says $500. All we have to do now is take our mouse and go up to the record and save menu item. After the pre-certification closes, we're back at the applicant form. Notice the tabs at the top of the applicant form. The third one from the left is called status. This is where I can change the status of an applicant. I'm going to take my mouse and click on the status tab. The status choices are listed beside the option buttons on the left side. They are new, accepted, rejected, removed, update, and inactive. I'm going to accept this applicant to the waiting list by clicking on the accepted, op the accepted option button. When I did this, a message box popped up. It says, important date time milestone. Important that you, up important that you update status change date time like month, month, day, day, year, 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 hour, hour, minute, minute, a.m., p.m. I'm going to press OK to get rid of this box. Now the status change date time button has focus. More than likely you're going to change that. It defaults in with this date and time, but often you'll be putting this in after the fact, so you will want to change that. The reason that you want to change that is, look at the red text over on the right side of that. It reads, important when you change status, update the change date. You will not have another opportunity after saving. This is to keep the integrity of the change dates. Enter like month, month, day, day, year, 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 hour, hour, minute, minute, a.m., p.m. This applicant will now show up on your waiting list reports. I would like to personally thank you for taking the time to view this training session. I know how hard it is to watch these without getting distracted. When you watch this video again or any others, please take note of the video player control buttons. They are sometimes located at different parts of the screen. This toolbar allows you to fast forward, pause, reverse, to replay parts of the video that you want to review or skip. Have a nice day.